Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a very special part of our hashtag TX book chart chat series um, when we are talking about the literary landmark for Larry McMurtry. Um, so my name is Rebecca Manley and I run the Texas Center for the Book where we work to increase literacy, reading, and library use statewide with a celebration of the written word and literary heritage. So you can see why literary landmarks are very important to the mission of what we do at the Center for the Book at the State Library. So the State Library is actually to the east side of the Capitol in, in Austin. We have other um, locations across the state. And the Center for the Book is housed and supported by the Texas State Library and Archive. So really <clears throat> happy to be here with you. I'm going to do uh, a little intro of our special guest, and then we'll dive in talking more about literary landmarks and the, the life and legacy of Larry McMurtry. So First, we have a very special, well, they're all very special, um, but we have the person that helped make this literary landmark possible. Gretchen Abernathy Cook accepted her dream job as the director of the Archer Public Library in 2018. With a background in customer service, finance, and bookkeeping, she especially enjoys helping her patrons solve problems, whether it be what book to read next, how the program on the how, how to work a program on the computer, or finding resources for a project. Growing up, school and public libraries were her safe haven, and she seeks to make the Archer Public Library just as welcoming for all its patrons. And I can say I know you are successful with that, Gretchen. Um, Beverly Laurie was born in Memphis and grew up in Greenville, Mississippi. She is the author of six novels and five works of nonfiction, including her latest book, Deer Creek Drive, A Reckoning of Memory and Murder in Mississippi, uh, oh, let me say that again. Deer Creek Drive, a reckoning of memory and murder in the Mississippi Delta. Her writing has appeared in the New Yorker, the New York Times, the Blossom Globe, Vanity Fair, Rolling Stone, Mississippi Review, Granta, and many other publications. She has received rewards from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Guggenheim Foundation, the Texas Institute of Letters, and the Mississippi Institute of Arts and Letters. She lives in Austin, Texas, y'all. Stephen Harrigan is the author of 12 books of fiction and nonfiction, including the best-selling selling novel, The Gates of the Alamo, and Remember Bill Clayton, which, among other awards, won the James Finmore Cooper Prize for Best Historical Fiction from the Society of American Historians. Big Wonderful Thing, his sweeping narrative of his, uh, history of Texas, was published by the University of Texas Press in October 2019 and was named the best nonfiction book of the year by the Philosophical Society of, Tex of Texas. His most recent novel, <clears throat> The Leopard is Loose, was released by Knopf in January, 2022. Harrigan is a writer at large and a long time contributor to the Texas Monthly. Many of his pieces he wrote for the magazine are collected in his career spanning essay collection, The, Eyes of the Eye of the Mammoth. He is also a screenwriter who has written many movies for television. For 20 years, he taught creative writing as a faculty fellow at the Michener Center for, Write uh, for Writers at the University of Texas at Austin. Harrigan has received Lifetime Achievement Awards from the Texas Institute of Letters also and the Texas Book Festival and was presented with the Texas Medal of Arts in 2019. He and his wife, Sue Ellen, live in Austin. Wow, I always get a little nervous reading those bios because I just, all of, everyone here is so accomplished and has so much to offer, um, and I never want to mess anything up, so thank you for your patience with that. Um, so I'm so glad to be in the discussion with y'all, um, and I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen so we can do the little visual element of the chat, and then we'll get into the Q&A. Um, so please enjoy seeing my screen for a moment. There we go. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. I don't know why. There we go. Did like just needed a little bit of double click. Oh, it was at the end of the slideshow. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Okay, yeah. All right. You just got a little preview. All right. So the Texas Center for the Book, this is our the banner over one of our doors at the State Library. And I encourage everyone to visit 
um, www.tsl.texas.gov slash center for the book to find out more of what we do. Um, this is our little logo for the hashtag TX book chat series. The literary landmarks, I could say a lot of those, but this is a 30 minute chat. So I'll just say we realized um, when I started the position, which um, tomorrow when we're recording this um, will be seven years that we only had five literary landmarks for the state of Texas. So we worked to get funding and our goal in 2020 was to double the amount of literary landmarks in Texas. And so um, you can go to our website and read more about um, the other fab four of the fab five that received um, this award, but it's a national award with the United for Library, with United for Libraries. I mean, it's also going to be now more of a partnership with the Library of Congress, but this, this, this literary legend, so to speak, this person can no longer be living. Um, and it has to be um, an author of distinction. And, you know, Larry is obviously very, very famous, um, but we also have authors that we want to make sure are famous. And so there's just a quite, quite the range in the literary landmarks. Um, and honestly, I hope that we get more funding so that we can bring more to Texas. Uh, but as you can see, we have Dr. Ted Shine, John Avery Lomax, Dr. Gloria Anzaldua, Lon Wood Taylor, and literary in the Larry the McMurtry. So please go visit our website to find out more. And you can see a map of the uh, existing ones that are in red. And then we have our other ones in blue, the, the newer ones that we were able to add to the map. So we've got a lot of work to do, Texas. We're going to keep doing it. Uh, thought it'd be fun to show the plaque for this literary landmark honor. Um, Gretchen, I know you worked tirelessly on getting the wording of this plaque just right. Do you want to share anything about that process? Yes, the the wording that was so interesting. You know, I love to go visit a historical site. Um, I like to go read those markers and I never put much thought into who writes those. <laughs> and now I guess I can say I've written one. Um, it It is, it's hard, especially for an author, someone whose craft is words to, to do them justice and to put their life and legacy into words. I, I hope everyone enjoys it and, and it does him justice and it honors his legacy. Yes. Should we read it out loud or do you think, yeah, Gretchen, do you want to read it out loud or do you want me we, to? We can, but I don't have the, uh, I'll have to pull the text up because I can't read yeah. it off of that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have it. I'll I'll do it. Larry McMurtry was a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist, essayist, screenwriter, and antiquarian bookseller from Archer City, Texas. He authored over 50, over uh, 30 written works examining life from the 19th century American frontier up to contemporary small town Texas, capturing the essence of place and time with craft, wit, and unforgettable characters. Many of his works, such as Lonesome Dove and The Last Picture Show, became television and movie adaptations, earning him numerous film awards alongside his multiple literary honors. And that's putting it lightly. You know, and I think, you know, we're with the Texas Center for Book at the State Library and Archives, but we should also thank the Summerlee Foundation for funding this. And then, of course, the Texas Library and Archives Foundation um, for the support and making it possible as well. So we had the big event, um, and it was held at the Royal Theater, um, the Royal Theater. And Gretchen, do you want to talk about that and the process that went into this event? Yeah, so uh, I think you reached out to me about a year ago, and um, I, not the first thing I did, but the, but the second, the first thing I did, of course, was make uh, McMurtry's family aware of the honor that he was being not being offered, but being up for that we were going to apply for and uh, make sure that they were comfortable with it because, you know, we just want to make sure that we move forward with the family's blessing. But uh, one of the most fun things I did, the very second thing I did was I reached out to, oh, I guess everybody I know. Um, <laughs> I reached out to, to community leaders and I told them about the honor 
and and said, okay, Larry McMurtry is sewn into every part of our town. I mean, he's got marks all over town. You know, where would we even put it? And yeah. just that conversation um, and gathering those minds together, it blossomed into such a beautiful thing. And uh, one of the people that I talked to was the, the president of the Royal Theater board and he immediately offered up the location he said well you have to have the the event here of course and and so we were able to um honor larry in a a building that he left his mark on yeah thank you for that and then we were able to show um a little bit of the lonesome dove um which i thought was really special and then um we had, you know, his siblings present, Sue Dean, Charlie McMurtry, and Judy McElmore. Um, and then we had our amazing panelists, two of which are here today. So we have Beverly Laurie and Steve Harrigan, but we also had um, George Getchow. Am I saying his last name right? Will you correct me on that? I think that's right, but okay. Steve might know better than I do. I think that sounds yeah. right to me, yeah. yeah. Great. And then moderator um, Greg Giddings. And so there's a picture of, of them and that panel. I mean, honestly, I could have been like, just do one more hour, keep going. It was just so engaging with the conversation. Um, and then here's another close up of the plaque, which is what I should have read because I couldn't see. And I'm glad I'm seeing it clearly because I thought maybe it was right. He authored over 50 written works. That seems a lot more on, on cue. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 Gretchen, I'll read it, um, but I can't. So um, this plaque is just so gorgeous. Yeah, and the plaque is going to go um, outside the library. Um, so we're really looking forward to, to seeing that when that's up, which I know is in process. Um, so there are the siblings. Again, we have um, Judy um, in red, and then we have Sue Dean and then Charlie. Uh, McMurtry. It's really special to have them there with us for that. And then the following images are courtesy of our partners at the Whitliff Collections. And some of them are just really sweet and special. And again, we're going to go through these images and then we'll have more of our chat, but they're really special um, Larry McMurtry images. Thank you, Whitliff Collection. So here's one of him when he was younger. Has anyone seen this one before? Sure. Yeah. I hadn't. Yeah. Steve, do you know anything about that cat? Not about the cat. <laughs> I know something about the sweatshirt. Which, right. Uh, <laughs> Larry uh, had, I guess, had made or somebody, you might know better, better Beverly, but I guess somebody gave it to him, but he, it said minor regional novelist, which was something of an epithet, I guess, uh, back then. And uh, somebody probably called him that in a review and he, wore that sweatshirt proudly. Do you know, do you know much more about it? Beverly? No, I don't know much more about it than that, but it was, uh, it's a, I mean, I really, this picture is of the sweatshirt as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> because that's the star of the picture. He was very proud of, you know, considering it a joke. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because I got, I was writing something about Larry and I got interested in, in the, the provenance of that sweatshirt and i just googled it and it, uh all these images you can buy a minor regional novelist t-shirt online as it turns really? out really <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's, it's that famous so uh, you know he, he, he made something of that of that slur i think yeah that phrase made it into the application for his literary landmark as well <laughs> <laughs> And this is just, I think, a really special picture that was taken by Bill Whitliff. Um, and then special picture, y'all might recognize this wonderful human. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about this picture, please? Uh, I'm not sure I can recognize that person, but I guess it's me. <laughs> and uh, this was, um, I, I wrote an article for Texas Monthly about the making of Lonesome Dove, so I was on the set for about a week uh, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I saw a lot of interesting stuff happening and actually got us uh, ended up being an extra in the, in the, in the mini series, which is always 
you know, I, I can impress people by <laughs> telling them that. <laughs> it's a non-speaking part, <laughs> very much so, and, and very, very brief and hard, hard to catch. But uh, it was a lot of fun being around that, uh, yeah, watching, you know, watching, you know, Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Duvall and everybody uh, just, yeah, really seriously committing to this movie in a way that was really, I've been on a lot of movie sets, but I've, I've never seen such absolute reverence for the source material as I saw on the set of Lonesome Dove. People just really were determined not to get this wrong. And I think they got it right as history has proven. And were you going to say something, Beverly? No, I was just going to ask Steve if he had to join a union or get paid for his part in the movie, in the miniseries. No, be because it was a non-speaking part. Okay. <laughs> I said I didn't have to, yeah. I, I did have a speaking part in one movie where I had one line and I would have had to spend, eight, I, I either would get paid $800 or I could spend, or I could take that $800 and join the Screen Actors Guild. So I just took the money and ran. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, this is, um, would you like to speak about the, about this image, Steve? Well, this is one of the really iconic photographs that, that Bill Whitliff, who was the, uh, the producer and screenwriter of Lonesome Dove took, you know, he was a great photographer and you know, a great friend of many of us in, in, in the Texas literary and all sorts of other worlds. And um, Bill took these, there's, there's a book of his photographs of Lonesome Dove. They're just really stunning. And uh, this is one of the many photos he took uh, of, of Robert Duvall, you know, as Gus McRae. And people collect these. They're very, uh, very popular. You see them. <laughs> I called Bill once because I was in a, a, ba a gas station bathroom. and I saw a, a <laughs> contraband version of one of these images above the urinal. And he said, yeah, yeah, it happens all the time. You know? <laughs> then this is another special image um, yeah. from the cat with the cast. Mm -hmm. That was and from then, oh. were, when the when the three main characters were younger. Yeah, you know, that's that's I think that was that's a photo that was actually used in the miniseries itself. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, and then this is a closer up one, which I just, I, I wish I could have known Larry McMurtry, but I think he just looks really kind in this image. Mm -hmm. um, what does this, what does this um, photo say to you, Beverly? Well, it, you know, he had this, he laughed at, at many things. I mean, he he took life uh, with a grain of salt, really. <laughs> you know, he yeah. could whatever happened, he just shrug and say, "Okay, there it is," and he would smile that little smile, like, "What are you gonna do?" And it's uh, it's very relaxed and very much himself right there. It's uh, it's a lovely photograph, and it's it's nice to see. Oh. It's another Bill Whitliff photograph, by the way. Is it? Well, yeah. yep. I mean, it's just, he's, it's a genuine, he's not posing. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's a great picture. I love it. I think those, those are all of our images, you know, I mean, we obviously could have found a lot more, but um, thanks for, thanks for humoring us and going through those. I think it's important to see you. Larry and his face and now let's talk more about y'all and your friendships with Larry and um, just dig more into that discussion um, you know before we I ask you know Beverly and see before I ask y'all questions um, I want to have a little bit more framing for the literary landmark um, honor and see Gretchen if you want to talk about that experience and and helping to create this literary landmark for this for this literary legend <laughs> Yes, it was um, it was really rewarding overall. Uh, I'd say I worked on my part of this project for about a year. Rebecca, I think you worked on it a bit longer though. Um, but the application process led me to do so much research. And Larry McMurtry, somebody who I talk about as the librarian, you know, 
librarians, we wear many hats. And one of my hats is uh, kind of visitor center when our visitor center is closed, kind of a tour guide. We get lots of people who come in who are curious about Larry, want to visit the bookshop, see the Royal Theater. And uh, so I, I felt like I had a, a pretty good grasp about him. I've heard stories from my family and, and I learned a bit about him working here, but the, uh, the delving in for the application, I really learned so much more. So I, I'm grateful for that opportunity to have done that. And uh, just working with everybody in our community, so many people came together, which su both surprised me and didn't surprise me. I, I knew we were part of a, a great community of people who helped, but got to experience it, which was wonderful. Um, and the, the process, you know, we, we applied for it. We waited to hear back. We, uh, we answered some follow-up questions from United for Libraries. And then we got our approval, which was very exciting. We had already, you know, been planning a ceremony as a theoretical. And that's part of the application is how you're going to recognize and honor the, uh, the landmark itself. And uh, so we got to really put some of those plans to the test and uh, the Archer City Writers Workshop helped us, you know, get in contact with Steve Hare again and George Getschow. George got us in contact with Beverly and just we, ha we had this amazing panel come together and the event itself was just, it was, you know, you think about this event for months and you plan for it, but it was just better than anything I expected. So mm -hmm. it was just I, I really enjoyed the the project. I was I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of it. We're so glad, grateful you got to be a part of it too. And as you were speaking and talking about how everyone was involved, I want to do a, a plug. So we have our two panelists that are part of the the Literary Landmark video with the Texas State Library and Archives Commission, and that link to that will be in the notes for that like the. <laughs> scroll below the YouTube video and find a link to that video because we did get to interview um, Sue Dean and Charlie McMurtry and there's a little bit from them on that. Um, so Beverly, I'd like to start with you for with a question and you know, Steve, please add to it um, as you'd like, but Beverly, what do you think that Larry would have thought about this literary landmark honor? Um, again, he would have uh publicly kind of shrugged. Um, I mean, I, I think he had a sense of um, uh, the, ev that everything was transitory, that, you know, you got it, and then, then you were a minor regional novelist. So, um, but at a deeper level, he would have been pleased. I mean, who wouldn't? You know, I mean, he's a human being, and we write to be read and so it's a um, testament to what he has done and accomplished um that would certainly have pleased him he you know uh, but he would not have let you right off know that i think yeah yeah i think as far as the the secret pleasure he might have taken in this you know this this award i guess if that's what it's called was the fact that it was in archer city you know the yeah. the place that he yeah. he where he grew up and the place that he chronicled you know unforgettably in book after book after book and in and you know essay after essay after essay so uh, you know i think he had a sometimes contentious relationship with his hometown direction you could probably speak to that as well but i think i would <laughs> guess it would be very meaningful for, to him you know, if nobody was looking for him to be walking down exactly <laughs> leaving leaving Burns Cafe and taking a right turn and right. looking and seeing that plaque on the wall, you know, that might that might register with him, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Well said. Well said. Uh, so, you know, Steve, can you talk about the importance of Larry McMurtry in terms of his influence on Texas writers specifically? Yeah, of course. I think uh, I think he had a gigantic effect on on Texas writers and on Texas writing in general. And, and probably, you know, I, I mean, 
people we all admired his work and and wanted in some ways to maybe not to emulate it or imitate it but to to step up to that mark that he left but i think also it was important that uh you know he allowed us to write about texas in some way i mean you know back when i was starting out as a writer when i was in my early 20s you know it was hard to imagine that there would be an audience for uh, books about texas or you know uh you know we thought novels were supposed to take place in new york and london and all the right. other world capitals and and larry had managed just by you know by by sort of filtering out all that noise from the outside to to focus on what was in front of him and what was important to him and what he understood and the first time I put, picked up a Larry McMurtry book, the first time I saw The Last Picture Show, there was this startling realization that, that he was writing about the place I was living. Mm -hmm. And if he could do it, you know, if he, if he could give, if he could do it, maybe it gave me permission to try to do it. And, and I'm not the only one who feels that way. I've talked to many, many Texas writers, uh, uh, who 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 had the same exact reaction that he kind of knocked the lid off this jar of possibilities and and we were able to you know to just sort of open our eyes to the place where we lived and to write about it in a way that that that, that was honest and not necessarily mythic or or you know just uh, self indulgent. Yeah, thank you for that. I think it's uh, a important also to note that Larry loved cities mm -hmm. and he loved mm -hmm. to travel to cities. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's possible to get too focused on his uh, creation of small town Texas. He also loved Houston and uh, had Houston books, had a bookstore in Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a man of varied interest both intellectual and emotional um mm -hmm. and yet he would like a lot of us i mean a lot of us think i don't want to write about my hometown and then we do and then we do again because that's what we know and uh as steve said he said to other writers without me you know setting out to say it it's okay <laughs> you know you mm -hmm. can do that uh, i lived in new york for a while and until I moved out. I was, I thought, I, you know, I wanted to be a New Yorker. I wanted to write like a New Yorker, like they wrote in the New Yorker magazine. Um, and it took leaving to convince me. And I, you know, I moved to Houston that it was okay. You know, I could write about who I was and where I came from. Mm. Thank you for that. And, you know, Beverly, you talk about, can you talk about when you realized you were an important woman in Larry's life? You know, um, Rebecca, a lot of this understanding um, uh, has come as a surprise to me. Um, I knew he was as generous a person as I've ever known in my life. And um, he was generous to many people. And I knew he had uh, uh, many very attractive women friends, famous uh, celebrities. And I thought I was just somebody who was a friend and, you know, a writer, and he was good to me. And um, I actually heard the term one of his women applied to me uh, from his son, James. Oh. who said, I went to see uh, James play at the Continental Gallery. And afterwards, he said, Beverly, my dad's looking for you. He's writing a book about his women. And I, my thought was, oh, who are they? <laughs> you know, it <laughs> took me a minute to. Um, but he did have uh, in the back room of his house, which he called the mansion, um, a table with glass on top of it. And photographs under it and there were all these photographs of women and I think those were the people he considered uh his women and uh since his death other people have said things to me 
that have been surprising that, well, you know, Larry considered you one of his women. So I, I don't quite know how to answer that question, <laughs> but there you go. That's the best I can do. Yeah. Um, I so, feel a little bit, I feel a little bit like I should get a sweatshirt that says, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes. I would love that. And then we can give you a little kitty to hold and we'll take a picture and you can look up to the right. side. <laughs> you would get a huge kick out of that. <laughs> Um, so y'all we're at time, but I have to ask one final question and each of you can answer it however you'd like, you know, what do you think this honor might mean for Archer city and for Texas as a whole? Anyone? The plaque you're talking about, what, what it would mean? To yeah. Us? To have that, this national distinction of being a literary landmark. Well, I mean, Gretchen could, could speak to this more, but I, I think Archer city is all as you sort of indicated earlier, Archer City is already kind of a literary tourist destination. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's an informal one. I mean, <laughs> people go to the Royal Theater, they go to the Dairy Queen, you know, <laughs> where, where, where Larry used to hang out. But this kind of codifies it. It kind of makes it clear to the world that this is, just not not just a nice town, but it's a place that you really need to stop, look at, think about, try to factor out what its relationship is to the larger, you know, cultural landscape of Texas. And so, you know, I think it's, it, you know, it's a small plaque, but it's a thrilling uh, gesture, I think. Mm, I like that. Anything to add, uh, Gretchen? I, I think, well, to me personally, it's, it's comforting as a, as a, a landmark, as a site to stop in our town um, that honors Larry McMurtry, because a lot of the stops that people make in Archer City to the Royal Theater, uh, to his bookstores, to the, the Dairy Queen, um, a lot of those and you know his house that he had here in town too. Really, I, I can add to the list as if I sit here and think about it. But a lot of those are are privately owned. Um, the future is questionable for if they'll still be there, if they'll remain a testament to his history and his legacy on the town. Um, you know, the Royal Theater talks about they're a nonprofit too, and they, they have concerns about funding. Um, the bookstores sold recently. I know that they're still going through his house and, you know, Dairy Queen, it's a, it's a company. It's not, it's not publicly owned. It's not something that is guaranteed to stay in the town forever, but this landmark will be, and it will be here and it'll be something that will, we can remember him by forever. Yeah. Well said. Um, well, anything to add? Anything that you're like, oh, I want to make sure I say this. Well, I would like to ask Gretchen, do people uh, who come to the library comment on the plaque? I mean, have, have you gotten feedback from visitors? We have had a lot of people ask where it is. It has not been installed yet. Um, it's more weather dependent than I anticipated. There, there was a lot that went into this, you know, getting this plaque here. Um, but the, not to get too technical, but it has to be adhered with an adhesive onto the stonework. And it requires the temperature outside to be so high so that the glue sets. So we want to make sure it's very secure. Yes. Um, so, but I have had uh, a lot of people come in and say, I didn't get to come to the event. Where's the plaque? And I'll go show them, you know, where it is informally. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I look forward to, to hearing about the feedback once, once we have it up for visitors to enjoy. Oh, and get ready to be even more of a tour guide because people are going to see that and really come mm -hmm. into the library. And that's a beautiful thing. Yes. We're excited to welcome them in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I know that Larry himself was a supporter of the library. And I, I think that I think that's the right spot for it. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Well, we could keep talking and talking, but these are chats. So we are going to wrap this up. I just want to say thank you so much to the three of y'all for 
spending so much time with me and and with this this um, literary landmark um, program and initiative. And um, thank you, viewer, for watching this. I hope that you check out some of our other um, chats as well. If you want to know more about Texas authors and literacy-based nonprofits, we try to just kind of run the range as far as what we talk about on here. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions or suggestions for a future chat. And, um, just th thank you guys. And we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you.